Hello. So this is fourth video in the enclosing spondylitis series. In this video, we will study about the another entity known as diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. So dish, which is commonly used term along with the enclosing spondylitis, wherever enclosing spondylitis is discussed, we should know about the differentiating feature between the dish and the enclosing spondylitis. So this video, we will study about that. So basically the first first important feature of dish or the definition of uh, dish is the it is the formation of non marginal syndesmophytes at at least three successive levels so it is the presence of the non marginal syndesmophytes so as we have discussed in our previous videos that enclosing spondylitis is the formation of the marginal osteophytes we have a osteophytes syndesmophytes at the margins whereas in a case of dish it is a non-marginal they occur not at the margin alone so it is a non-marginal syndesmophytes so this is the definition it is the formation of the non-marginal syndesmophytes at at least three successive levels in demography we uh, this dish entity is seen in more than 50 years of age, more common in male. And the site involved is the thoracic spine is most commonly involved, then the cervical and the lumbar. In thoracic, even, the, even in thoracic, it is the right side that is most commonly involved because on the left side, we have a pulsatile aorta, which prevents the formation of the syndesmophytes. So the formation of syndesmophytes is asymmetric in thoracic spine. Whereas in cervical and lumbar, it is a symmetric syndesmophytes. And few risk factor is the gout, hyperlipidemia and the diabetes mellitus. These are the risk factors. So to diagnose the dish entity, we should have these. It should fall in the, this criteria. So first one is the flowing ossification along the interior lateral aspect, at least in the four contiguous vertebras. So it is the formation of the flowing ossification, flowing ossification. It is the candle wax appearance, dripping candle, like a dripping candle wax. So it is a flowing ossification, just like a dripping candle wax, as if the candle wax is dripping. Whereas in case of, whereas normally the thoracic spine looks like this, but in dish, it will appear as a dripping candle wax or a flowing ossification so then important feature of dish is the preservation of the disc height so disc height will be preserved in case of the dish entity and the last is the there will be absent of the facer joint ankylosis or sa joint erosion which is seen in ankylosing spondylitis so this criteria needs to be fulfilled to diagnose a patient with the dish entity then what symptoms the patient will present with? Often it is asymptomatic and is diagnosed incidentally. So as we know that thoracic spine is most commonly involved. So patient may complain of a chronic mild back pain along with the stiffness more in the morning, which is similar to the enclosing spondylitis. Now if the cervical spine is involved, so patient may have a, all these features because of compressive features. It, patient may have, may have a pain, stiffness, then compressive features of dysphagia, stridor, hoarseness or sleep apnea. So these were the features of the cervical spine involvement. As in this figure, we can see the flowing osteophytes or a flowing dripping candle wax appearance seen in the anterior lateral aspect so it may cause compressive features then how to diagnose it we have a x-ray which is the most important thing so in thoracic spine so as it we have discussed that it will be a asymmetrical syndesmophyte formation more on the right side than on the left side so as seen here 
So this is the left side, this is the right side as we can see the formation of the ossification on the right side. In cervical spine there will be anterior bone formation on the x-rays. So as seen here there will be anterior bone formation in cervical spine. Important thing to know that the disc space is still preserved. And in lumbar, we have a symmetrical syndesmophytes. In lumbar, we have a symmetrical syndesmophytes. Now, other imaging techniques like bone scan, CT, MRI can be done. Now, MRI needs to be done to look for any compressive features, compression of the spinal cord. CT can be done to look for any occult fractures and bone scan will uh, will be a, a hot uptake in case of dish now coming upon to the differentiating features so this chart it tells us about the various differentiating feature between dish and the ankylosing spondylitis so as we know that dish is a idiopathic whereas ankylosing spondylitis is a autoimmune disease. The incidence of dish is more than the ankylosing spondylitis. Age of onset as we have discussed that it is mostly in more than 50 years whereas ankylosing spondylitis age of onset is less than 30 years. Male is almost same male they are more commonly involved in male. Clinical features dish may present as pain, radiculopathy, dysphagia and risk of spinal and peripheral fracture. Whereas ankylosing spondylitis, it presents as pain, stiffness, various postural abnormalities, and along with involvement of the large peripheral joints. Radiological features, it affects the anterior longitudinal ligament of the spine, whereas it spares the intervertebral disc and the SI joint. Whereas ankylosing spondylitis, intervertebral fusion, joint fusion, along with the SI joint involvement is seen. Lab findings, there is no specific, no uh, increased ESR-CRP, whereas in clonic spondylitis, there is raised ESR-CRP. Then associated with other disease, it may be associated with obesity, diabetes mellitus, and other few disease. In ankylosing spondylitis, there are various extraskeletal manifestation like involvement of iritis, uveitis, ulcerative colitis, and in treatment it is symptomatic we treat for the symptoms whereas here it is a various disease modifying drug biological drugs mesides and surgery can be done so these were a few of the differentiating features other than then we have a other features we have a differential of the syndesmophytes so in dish we have a non-marginal whereas in spondylitis is the marginal syndesmophytes in x-ray we uh, we have discussed that there will be a flowing candle wax appearance whereas in closing spondylitis there will be bamboo spine there will be squaring of the vertebra there will be ruminous region which is the sclerosis at the attachment of the annulus fibrosus disc space is preserved in dish whereas in case of closing spondylitis there may be ossification of the disc space osteopenia there is no osteopenia in dish whereas osteopenia is present in and closing spondylitis. There is no association of DISH with the HLA-B27 whereas and closing spondylitis has a strong association. Age group it is more in older it is more in younger patient and there is no SI joint involvement in DISH whereas and closing spondylitis there is a bilateral sacroiliitis. So these were few of the differentiating features. So if the patient is having Dish or inclusive spondylitis, we can differentiate from these features. So we have to continue with, we have points favoring dish. There will be no backache or mild backache and minimal of the morning stiffness. There will be low ESR CRP. There will be a typical flowing wax appearance of ostified, no sacroiliitis and intervertebral disc will be preserved. And points favoring inclusive spondylitis, there will be HLA B27 positivity. So that was about the differentiating features between dish and the ankylosing spondylitis.
so uh, they should be kept in mind to rule out whether this entity is a dish or ankylosing spondylitis kindly comment down below any queries or any comments and keep supporting let's play ortho